Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will take a look at how to use the Avada icon element. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. Ok, let's begin. The icon element does what it says and allows you to add icons into your content. These can be font awesome icons or even your own custom icons. Icons are also included as options in several other elements, but if you want to add one independently, you'll want to use the icon element. As an example, I'm on the dispensary pre-built here, and I will add an icon under the title here. So I will add the icon element here, and just align this to the center. Ok, let's look at configuring this. The first option on the general tab is choosing the icon itself. You can search for an icon at the top, and below this you can select from the icon subsets, including any custom sets that might have been added. There is also a plus icon on the right hand side of the icon picker, and clicking this takes you directly to the page to add a new icon set. For more information on adding custom icons, see the provided link. For this icon, I'll go to the dispensary custom set, and choose this leaf here. The next option is the size of the icon, and here I want it reasonably large, so I think I will set this to about 70 pixels. The next option, flip icon, allows us to flip the icon if we want, in a horizontal or vertical direction. You can also rotate the icon in the option below this. The next option is spinning icon, and if you like a bit of animation, you can have the icon spinning by setting this to yes. I think I will leave this on no. Next comes an option called link, which you can use to link the icon to any URL, and there is also a link target option under this to control how the link opens. The alignment option is next, and we have already aligned this to center to match the layout. The final options in the general tab are the usual element visibility option, which allows you to choose whether the element is displayed on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID fields, which allow you to further customize the element with custom CSS. Ok, let's move to the design tab. The first option is for margins, and I can fine tune the icon's placement with these if I like. I think I will add 30 pixels bottom margin here. Icon color comes after this. The default is color 1 here, but I think instead I will change this to color 3. For the hover state, I think I will also set it to color 3 here as well. Under this is the icon background option. It's on default, which clearly is yes in this case. This brings with it a bunch of dependent options for the background. The first of these is icon background size. With a value of minus 1, we get the default size, which is automatically calculated. Alternatively, we can set a manual value of up to 1000 pixels. I'll just leave it at minus 1. Icon background color is next, and here it's set to the default of color 5, with a hover state of color 4. Obviously, you can set these colors to whatever you want, including adding transparency or any other global color adjustment. You can do this in the element, or if you click on any of the cog icons in the element, this will take you to the element defaults, where you can adjust the defaults to your liking. I will leave them as they are, and come back to the element. So here I will set the background color to color 6, with a minus 50 alpha adjustment. And on the hover state, I will set it to color 6 again, also with the alpha adjustment, and a small minus 10 luminance adjustment as well. Ok, the next option is for an icon background border size. This is currently set to 1 pixel, but it's a bit hard to see as the border color below this is set to color 8. If I just increase the border size to 3, and set the border color to color 3, then we can see it clearly. Obviously there is also a hover state color option for the border color as well, and I will set that to color 3 to match. Under this, the last background related option is the border radius. It's set to the default of 50%, which gives us a circle, but you can set each border independently. For example, if I set all four borders to 0%, we get square corners instead. I'll just remove those to go back to the default. The final option on this tab is the icon hover animation type. You can choose from fade, which is the default on this pre-built, or you can choose slide or pulsate. Slide just has the icon sliding in from the left, Pulsate is the other option, which gives a very interesting effect. On rollover, the icon shrinks a little, and an expanding fading ring appears around the icon. Finally with this element, there is the Extras tab. For more information on the animation options, please see the link provided. 
I'm just going to leave the animation setting on none, and now let's preview the page. Here's our icon, and we can see the behaviors we chose for it. Yeah, that's looking good. But for all that, I think this is looking a little too busy for this site. I might just go back and set the icon background to no. This leaves us with just a simple icon. And I'll also change the animation type to slide here. Okay, if I come back now to preview and check this out. Yeah, I think I like that better. In any case, the icon element allows you a wealth of choices to add an independent icon into your content. Okay, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.